Hey guys, Kvio here and today we're doing the mid-month wrap-up. That's right, I read enough this month to be able to do a mid-month wrap-up. But I have also been kind of like procrastinating on it, I guess. I mean, it is the 19th when I'm filming this. I was supposed to film it on the 16th and then have it go up on the 18th. So apologies for the delay, but you are looking at a new woman because I went to the doctor yesterday and he did like chiropractor stuff and oh I feel so good <laughs> like everything is relaxed I'm also on muscle relaxer so if this video becomes a bit weird then um, maybe the muscle relaxers have gone to my brain as well but so yeah I'm feeling great now I have been suffering for a week and that's probably also part of the reason why I haven't been filming because my mind was so distracted was so registering pain and not much else so we're true with that we're feeling great in three days times so i'm going on holiday so everything is looking great and it's time to talk about the books that i've read so far this month this mid-month wrap-up is only going to include the books that i read in the first half of the month so only up until the 15th of the month and it's not going to include books that I hauled, it's not going to include my statistics or anything like that, all of that is for the end of the month for the final wrap up for this month. But So here I'll just be talking about the books that I did read already so that that wrap up doesn't become overly long. First book that I finished was a carryover from July, I was not able to finish it within the month of July so I had to carry it over, I think I was about like 500 pages in at the end of the month so i did still have to read some like 300 or so in the month of august and that is assassin's quest by robin hobb hello yes hello um so this is assassin's quest by robin hobb which is the third book in the farseer trilogy which is the first series within the realm of the elderlings still following so within this series we are following fitz who at the beginning of the series is a sort of like young boy who is left on the doorstep of his relatives who are actually royalty as a son of royalty but as a bastard as well he's kind of the perfect midway point in order for him to be trained as an assassin his blood ties to royalty should mean that he will be loyal to them but at the same time he's also not as important as the real royal family and so he can be used in situations where his royal status might be an impediment to what he has to do. So this is very much a character focused series. There is not as much like plot focus as in some other series. I think the first book is quite plot centered compared to the later books, but definitely the second book, for example, the pacing goes down a whole lot. And that is actually my favorite book within the series. Because my qualm with this one is that I didn't like it as much as the second one. And then I kind of felt like it was a middle book. I had middle book syndrome with the final book, not with the second book. I kind of feel like a lot of the page count with this one. Yes. I kind of feel like a lot of the page count with this one had to be spent in dealing with the ending of book two, which is very epic. And so we're kind of dealing with what had happened at that point in time, moving the story towards its new focus within this book. But I kind of feel like it took like half of the book or something for that to happen. I kind of feel like half of the book was spent rounding off that arc, moving towards the second arc, and that we only then had a real idea about where the story was going in the second arc of this book. So that i didn't really enjoy a whole lot i kind of felt like it could have been narrowed down a whole lot and while i also feel like the second book could be narrowed down you could skip over certain things or anything like that the length of that book didn't impede my enjoyment whereas here there were definitely times at which i was kind of like come on move along <laughs> aren't we there yet another thing about this is that a lot of this is a quest the second half of this book has a sort of like real quest and it has a lot of traveling and this is not the first instance of me being bored with travel so i don't know maybe i just really don't like following people who are moving from one location to another but i cannot be sure of that but that is definitely something that I've noticed with this book as well as with Stormlight Archive. The sections I don't like as much about Stormlight Archive are travel sections. 
So perhaps it is just that. But so I do think that I like the way that it rounded off, perhaps a little bit too quick for my enjoyments. I very much loved Fitz and the Fool in this one. I think their relationship was developed so well and went into such interesting places. You also had some discussions of, for example, gender that were very interesting within this one, as well as that sort of concept of time revolving around in circles. So interesting things to this book, but all in all, I didn't have the same level of enjoyment with this one as I've had in the previous books within this installment. Another book that I read, and I'm gonna just try to remember its title, but I might contradict myself in the comments here. Another book that I read is Reading Quirks, I think it was called. It was basically a sort of like comic book collection or like graphic novel type book that was a collection of these sort of like small comic book sketches about readers, about, you know, the quirks of being a reader, about, you know, dog earring pages or not, or, you know, like lending out books and being like all paranoid about the state in which they returned, those types of things. It is very short, it's like 94 pages, and of course, because it is like comic book strips, it's also like super quick to read, but I did definitely enjoy it, so it's something fun to pick up uh, between your reading, maybe. And so um, it was available on script, so if you want to check it out, then you can definitely do so through that. I did definitely enjoy that sort of like palate cleanser after this humongous book that I had to finish at the beginning of August. I then went into what a book that I had high, high hopes for, and it ended up kind of disappointing me. And that is Augustus by John Williams. Now, I did not hate this book. It's probably the problem. It is kind of midway there. I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I did to some extent. Because diving into this, I didn't in advance really know that it is only told through letters and through kind of like reports and things like that. And so I didn't really see how that was going to work for a book that is basically all about the Emperor Augustus, about his um, rise, basically, about the time in history in which Julius Caesar, his uncle, has just been murdered. He was adopted by Julius Caesar and so he's kind of his heir, but there is some contention about that and there are other players who want to claim the power that has now become available. And so this book is very much about his kind of then rise to become the emperor, to become the one who will unify the Roman Empire. And uh, apparently, because, spoiler, I DNF this, Apparently, the second book is then kind of about, you know, that period in time in which he was at the top of his game, but about how personally, privately, he was very much miserable and he wasn't a happy person. But even though I ended up enjoying the format a lot more than I expected, I also ultimately felt like I wasn't gaining anything from this book. I picked up this book because I loved John Williams' stoner. I thought Stoner was one of the best books that I'd ever written at that point. I should need to reread it now to see what my opinions are, are about it now. But so at that point, I absolutely loved Stoner and I decided to pick up the two other books by John Williams. But as the introduction to this book says, the books by John Williams that we have available to us, which are four, I think, are extremely different from one another. They cannot be compared. And while... <laughs> I don't know what my opinion towards Stoner would be right now. With this one, I ultimately felt like, yes, I'm engaged. The format of having it all take place in terms of letters or in reports makes it so that you do kind of feel as if you're in the moment, as if these are events that still need to unfurl. This format also really worked well because you kind of would be able to see like the different ways in which people talk about events based on who they're talking to. So you might have like a, a super polite letter towards Augustus. And then you'll have that same person talking to a friend of his and being like, who does this Augustus thing that he is and things like that. So I did really like that sort of like aspect to it as well. Interestingly enough as well, you don't get any letters from the perspective of Augustus um, until like apparently the very final part of this book. But so yeah, as I said, I kind of felt like, yes, I can keep on going and I can finish this book and I will have had a decent time with it, but I was also not gaining a lot of, out of it. It wasn't 
addressing interesting topics or interesting thematics. It wasn't diving into the character uh, the way that I might have wanted it to. It was just like an okay read, but also there was nothing that I could specifically grasp to that was really worth it to me. Um, the only thing that I could really like comment on were these like sort of like structural things that were working quite well. And so it, like I felt like I was appreciating the craft, but I didn't have an emotional connection to it, I guess is basically what I mean. And I guess a big part of that problem is that lack of connection to the character. Um, because we don't have anything from the perspective of Augustus himself, I feel like that leaves us as a distance from Augustus, who is our main focal point of the story. And as a character-focused reader, I just was missing that. So I put this down. I am not unhauling it. I am keeping it on my shelves for the time being. Perhaps I will one day give it another go, but at the moment it is just like, it didn't do much for me, sadly. And then the final book that I read in the first half is The Last Man by Mary Shelley. This is basically a pandemic book. It is an apocalyptic book set in our future by the author of Frankenstein. So this is the almost unknown other book by Mary Shelley. She actually has other books than these as well and I'm definitely interested now because I really was surprised by this one and ended up really enjoying it. At this point in time I wanted to say that I loved it more than Frankenstein but part of that love is the surprise of not having expected to love it. So like after a while I guess I'll be able to tell you a little bit better whether this will stand the test of time or not. But so in this one we are towards the end of the 21st century and for the first half of this book nothing really happens in terms of pandemic contents. So for the first half of this book we're basically following these three central characters, Lionel and Adrian. Lionel and Adrian are connected to each other through their fathers. The father of Adrian was king of England but he renounced his throne and at that point England became a republic. But he and Lionel's father kind of were estranged from one another at some point. But in the generation of Adrian and Lionel, they will reform that connection and form a very strong friendship role. And then the other central character will be Raymond, who's kind of the rival of Adrian, because Adrian wants to go after what is basically sort of like Prime Minister's spot, which is the Lord Protector's spot. And, um, he is a sort of like more charismatic, more pragmatic leader, whereas Adrian is kind of presented as the sort of like idealistic dreamer type um, person. And these three characters are very closely linked to each other, not just in terms of the plot, but they also end up closely related to marriage ties. So Raymond marries the sister of Lionel, Lionel marries the sister of Adrian, for example. And so it is also in that first half very much centered on their different um, successes in marriage, for example, one of the marriages being more successful than the other. And then in the second half of the book, this pandemic starts to creep in. In this case, it is a plague pandemic, and you very much see that at the time in which Mary Shelley was writing this book, sickness was kind of that sentence to some extent, you know. In this book, there is no real sort of like exploration of how are we going to fight this illness? How are we going to, you know, um, take care of people who have been hit with the plague? Basically, if you contract it, then it's up to God whether you survive or not. And actually only one character in this book contracts the plague and survives. And so um, a lot of it is centered around avoiding getting it. Uh, which is, of course, very relatable to us in our setting nowadays. But for us, it's very different because for us, it's more about making sure it doesn't spread and making sure that, you know, hospitals aren't overrun. But we do have a more promising aspect to our healthcare when it comes to this um, whole situation. And I think, like, if you were watching this in the future and we're hit with another pandemic or another, like, potential pandemic, do not read this book at the very beginning when everything is still unsure, when people don't really know what to do, when people are kind of worrying about what is our fate, what is going to happen, because this is the, a very bleak portrayal of what will happen. So, um, but what for me, this book is now also, of course, inextricably linked to our experience during the pandemic. I think 
when I check the reviews, there are a lot of sort of like so-so reviews for this book or a lot of reviews that are like, but nothing happens. And interestingly enough, almost all of those reviews are written pre-pandemic life. The most people who have read it during the pandemic have either given it like great reviews or just like mediocre reviews, but uh, there weren't any that were really saying like too much negative about it, neither. Because it is very relatable and even though it was written in the 19th century and so even though a lot of things such as vaccinations and things like that are absolutely not part of this world because they weren't invented yet at that time, a lot of things that are cons that are referred to definitely do make sense to us. That sort of idea of the optimism of leaders that it won't be as bad or it won't reach their shores. These sort of like late reactions to um, events escalating the way that they take measures, but they don't really know whether the measures they're taking are the right measures to take or not. The way that they try to prevent the sickness from spreading, but they also want to make sure that people still have their pleasure, their enjoyment, so they are keeping the theaters open, for example, within this book. The way in which some of these characters will find great joy and great wholesomeness from returning to nature, from um, spending time in nature. Um, the Yeah, there's just a whole lot in there that is very relatable from our pandemic life. And even the whole setup of this book, where the first half of this book is just like a regular normal life, aka our 2019, and then moving into pandemic life with 2020, so to speak, is so relatable, you know. It is basically as if you start the story of COVID-19, but you started like in March 2019, for example, with characters who don't know what's about to hit them. Um, I'm not going to say too much more about this, except for the fact that if you want to read this book, definitely do also check out Mary Shelley's biography either before or after. Um, I think you can do either way, but there are a lot of autobiographical elements to this story as well. For example, some of the characters within this book, they elope together, and that is also the case for Mary Shelley herself. She and her husband eloped. And then there's also death of a child within this one, so do be wary of that trigger in there. Um, it is called The Last Man for a reason. And um, Mary Shelley herself had four children, but three of them she lost at an early age. So one of them was born prematurely, for example, and then the others died early on in their childhoods. Um, so that is another autobiographical element, for example, in there. But so, yeah, um, I can only recommend. I really was pleasantly surprised with this book. Um, but so, as I said, do be wary. Like, if you're eagerly, if you are triggered by pandemic contents because of the current times, which I definitely understand. I personally have kind of felt like it's therapeutic for me to read about other pandemics or fictional pandemics, um, but I definitely can understand that this wouldn't be the thing for you. Um, but I definitely found great merit in reading this and think that it's kind of the time to read it now, or, you know, a few years in the future, when hopefully COVID-19 is no longer a thing, when those memories are still part of our lives, then this would also still be fine. But I think it is a much more interesting read now than it probably was five years ago. But so yeah, on that note, those are the books that I've read. I've gone on for way too long, so I'm just going to be super quick about what I'm currently reading and, you know, my prognosis for finishing my TBR. So I'm currently still in the middle of a few books, but I'll only be mentioning two here because one of them is like a nonfiction that I've been reading for months. Another one is a secret TBR book. But so I just started yesterday Shadows of Self by Brandon Sanderson. I am not that far into it, so um, but I do expect to be able to finish that within this week, for example, before I leave for Portugal. And then I am also still Moving my way through Les Miserables, I don't know whether I already gave you guys an update at some point about Les Miserables, except for in a reading vlog, but I'm really enjoying it. It definitely has its parts that are like super long and in which I'm not really paying that much attention, aka the beginning. I think the beginning of every part of this story, because it's divided in five parts, and the sort of like first book in each of those parts, that's really like 
oh why is it there oh why are you including it that's very much just sort of like descriptive passages about some sort of a topic that doesn't seem to be all that necessary for him to dive into within the book um but so maybe you could even skip those just saying <laughs> but so apart from that i'm really enjoying the original um, story and you know as i'm getting further and further into this i'm definitely seeing which parts they took for the musical things like that but reading the original definitely holds merit and i think that you know everything that is added to it in terms of that main storyline while sometimes it is a little bit much as well it definitely is an enrichment that i've really been enjoying uh, getting to see all of those things as well so uh would definitely encourage you guys to pick it up at some point. And then, in terms of my TBR, there's only one book that I haven't started yet, and that is um, The Lies of Lachlan Mora by Scott Lynch. I was originally going to hope to get this done before Portugal, but I don't think so. Uh, I will try to get like some pages done in it before I leave for Portugal, so that I don't have the full book to go anymore at that point in time. But yeah, it's gonna have to go for Portugal because, you know, it is Thursday afternoon now. I need to edit this video and uh, I need to film another video still tomorrow then. Um, but I need a lot of editing this weekend because I need to make sure you guys have content while I'm away on holiday. So uh, I think Shadows of Self will already be enough to finish over the weekend. And so perhaps still something already in this book. But I mean, it's, it's gonna be for the Portugal holiday. But so yeah don't think i have any problems finishing my tbr this month um whether we'll add something to it or not who knows might have already finished something in the meantime that isn't mentioned in this video but so yeah that is going to be it for this particular video hope you guys enjoy the rest of your month i definitely will because i am so looking forward to going on holiday but so yeah see you guys when i'm back but you guys will actually see me before that but okay but okay i've blabbered for long enough and uh, i think i need to round off the video here so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you guys for a future one bye